Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Screezilla here and I hope you're all well and welcome to episode 2 of the Beginner's Guide to War Thunder, the starting guide. And this is the start of Who Should I Play. Now, Who Should I Play is going to be episodes on each nation. Now I'm going to keep it relatively short and sweet and talk about the reserves of each nation, so your starting vehicles, and then where to go from there. Now the choice of which nation to play is a hard one to simply say which one is the best. Um, every nation has their strengths and every nation has their weaknesses. Now we can start looking at the textures and work out who is stronger where and who is weaker where. Uh, but let us start with the French tanks. Let us start with the reserves of France. So the first French tank we are looking at is the AMC 34YR. Now the, Re the Renault AMC 34 is a rather small tank and was only made in very small numbers during the uh, 1930s. The tank is a considered a light tank and best used to try and flank your enemy with. The hull armour is rather thin only at 20 millimeters. However, the APX-1 turret, uh, which was a sort of turret manufactured by France for most of their vehicles, it was a, they had these sort of standard features that they all have for, for French tanks. And you will notice this a little bit. Um, if we look at the H-35, for instance, um, they have this like dome turret, which is the, I can't remember the actual name of it off the top of my head, but they share the same sort of turrets. There was also the FCM, which had a different turret altogether, this rather strange pyramid turret. But later variants started to use the AMX turret, sorry, the APX turret here. Now, the turret is very well armoured for rank 1. This means if you can actually manage to go hull down with this tank, you're going to have a good experience and the enemy are going to find it very hard to penetrate your turret armour. The strange thing with this tank though is actually the front of it, um, because you actually have a very strong section of this tank. Now the sloped 30 to 35 millimeter armour of this turret is very strong, however the downside to this tank is sort of outweighs the good parts. Uh, you're going to find that with a lot of the early French tanks as well. The, the good parts outweigh the... sorry, the bad parts outweigh the good parts. And this is because the French tanks early on were all very similar to each other. They had this doctrine of very small, very light tanks. Um, they were made for infantry movement, not for tank combat. And this shows with things like the gun. The, the short 47mm SA-34 is a very low velocity cannon and this means the MLE 1892G shell uh, has a very poor penetration value of only 27mm at point blank range, this is no range at all. However the APH E shell packs 50 grams of explosives so if you do manage to penetrate an enemy, you are going to cause a lot of damage with a single shot. So here we are on the test range, and I'm just going to talk about the tactics of this vehicle. So what you want to do with this vehicle is generally use it as your first tank. So when you start a match, use this first. This is a good starting tank. Um, the main reason for that is because it's quite fast. As you can see, it's got relatively good speed. And this is something that some French tanks suffer from because they have very small engines. Uh, as you can see here with the actual layout, the engine is uh, just to the side of the, uh, the commander gunner loader here. And then we have the driver in front with the transmission. Now this is another thing to think about with French tanks is they only have two crew members. Now in arcade, that means if you get shot and lose one crew member, you can get a replacement. However, in the realistic battle, if you lose one crew member, your tank is dead and out of the match. So right here we have hands of 2C. So we're just going to look at it through our scope. And we'll just range it. So remember the range finding from the last episode, um, setting that up in your controls. So 190. So that's 200. 
So that will be about 190. Fire. And as you see, we do no damage at all to it. Frontally, we're going to struggle with most tanks in the game. Now, the tactics for this vehicle is going to be getting into a position where you can flank your enemy. You don't want to be fighting the enemy front on. So, tactically with this tank, what you want to do is try and find a good spot early in the match where you can sit where you know the enemy are going to pass you. So, if you get past a um, capture zone, for instance, say this, um, this telegraph pole here is the A capture zone. So what we would do is we would try and run past this early game before any tanks got here and then try and find a spot that we could hide in. So this, this uh, telegraph pole here is say a rock. So we've managed to find a spot to hide in. What we're going to do is we're going to keep our front to, the front to the rock and keep our side angled a little bit just so there is a chance we might bounce something if we are hit. So we're going to look to the side and then we see the Panzer II coming. Now, another thing with these turrets are they are manually operated. What this means is the poor commander in there has to turn a little crank in there to move the turret around. So you get very slow turret rotation. It is geared a little bit faster than some turrets, especially the Russian turrets, but you have to keep in mind that it's not a very fast turret. So say the Panzer II C here is coming along and it's running along to the capture zone. It hasn't spotted us, we're at the side of it. We then fire. We hit the uh, we hit the turret of the tank and we manage to take out the commander. Now, that would probably be a bad thing because we'd, he would get out of range. So what we want to do is aim a little bit lower and aim for the central mass of the tank. So with that we were a little bit lower, so the shell went through a little bit further and exploded more and caused more damage. So therefore we managed to kill it. Now we've got a Panzer, uh, Panzer IV beside us as well. Now the Panzer IV is a tank that you might face in a way. Now you're not going to face the C variant, and um, you will face some lower variants, but the Panzer IV and Panzer III are very similar. So again, the side, but we're going to aim for the armour just below the turret. Try to. We get the turret shot, we take out the crew. And this is the thing with this tank, you need to shoot from the side because otherwise you're not going to do any damage. Front on, you're not going to be able to penetrate pretty much any tank in the game. As I said, the MLE 1892 is a very slow, very low velocity shell. It was designed more to take out things like concrete bunkers or emplacements or maybe even foot infantry or armoured cars. It wasn't designed to fight tanks and that is one of the problems. With this tank you're not going to be able to snipe very well either. So if you're sitting in a position far away you're going to find it hard to hit enemies at a long distance. So say we're trying to fight the Tiger 2 there and we can range find it, get the details so 600, apparently. Fire. And we miss. And this is the trouble with the shell, because it's such a low velocity, it has a bit of an arc. And it can be very hard to, to fight the enemy with this. So you will struggle a lot. It also loses a lot of penetration over distance as well. If we look at the penetration values, you can see that it... At, Past 500 meters, it's below 20 millimeters of penetration, which is very, very low penetration abilities. So let's head back to the hangar now and look at the second tank for the French reserves. Now the next tank we have for the reserves is the Hotchkiss. Now the Hotchkiss H39 is a development of the H35. Now the H35 is here and it's a tank you can get, I'll explain that in a little bit of time. Um, but the H39 was an improvement over the prior model. The H39 comes from a, a sort of time when they were making private ventures and it was actually a privately ventured tank by the Hotchkiss factory to get in onto, onto the tank race. Now the H35 and H39 
are a light tank, and they were made in the 1920s. So 1926 is when they were developed and when they were fought off. So as you can tell, they're a very, very interwar early tank. The interesting thing about this vehicle is it innovated tank mechanics. And what I say by that is if you look at the hull here, you can see that there's no rivets on it. If we go back to the AMC, you can see all these rivet points. Now that's to hold the metal in place. With the H35 and the H39, you can see that there are no rivets on this tank at all. And what this is, is it's a fully cast hull. Now, casting the hull altogether, one thing, makes it a lot cheaper. But the other thing is it gives it quite good armour values, because you can, you can sort of cast the thickness that you need. And this tank has very good armour for its rank. Another benefit was, of course, it was quicker to manufacture than riveted tanks, because you just simply poured the metal into a mould, let it go, and then get on with the work. The H39 was upgraded with a new Hotchkiss six-cylinder, six-litre engine, which gave the tank much better power-to-weight ratio, and gave it a top speed of up to about 25 miles per hour. Now, that's going downhill with the wind behind you and another tank pushing you, but it, it can get some speed up. It's much faster than its H35 brother. The other thing is it has the new long SA-38 cannon. Now, a long-barreled cannon means that there's a bit more pressure when the shell goes out. So what that does is it gives the shell more velocity. And this shell has some good velocity. So if we look at the modifications here and the shell, the MLE 1938 shell is a solid armour-piercing shell. Basically, it's... If you imagine my water bottle here, it looks kind of like this. It's got a slightly rounded top, but it's just a big lump of metal. And it's designed to just punch through armour and just shatter on the inside and cause lots of damage. Using the MLE 1938 shell, you will have 48 millimetres of penetration at point blank range, uh, but also you'll have good penetration at longer ranges as well. The other benefit is it's much easier to aim. So we're just going to jump to the test drive with this vehicle now. Now one of the drawbacks of the 37mm arm piercing round is it's a very small round. And the trouble with that is it loses post penetration damage. So you will find you might need to use more than one or two shots to kill a tank. Sometimes it will take three or four attempts to kill a tank with this thing. And that can be very frustrating. Now again, the H39 has a very slow moving turret, and again it only has two crew members. The poor commander, gunner, loader has to basically hold the gun himself. And one of the things that he can do is he can actually rest the gun on his shoulder to make it slightly stabilised as well. Um, so that sort of can help a little bit. So you can actually have this gun in a sort of fixed position or free stabilised, uh, sorry, free moving. The tank has very good armour, as I said, but <sighs> armour is only good when you're facing vehicles that can't penetrate you, and unfortunately there are going to be a couple of vehicles that can go through your armour. So what we'll do, first of all, is the Panzer II C. So again, we'll take aim, and as you can see, the aim distance is much shorter with this tank. So we can simply pop a shot there, and we can kill the tank instantly. With this shell, you need to aim for the center of the mass of the tank to kill it instantly. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. It is a very small shell, as I said. Being a 37mm shell means it's, it's relatively small. Um, it, compared to a, a rifle round or, or things like that, it looks quite big, but when you compare it to things like the 40mm, the 50mm, the 60mm, the 90mm shells, it's very small in comparison, and almost like a rifle bullet. That is somewhat helpful, because it is a bit smaller, so it's, it has an easier time penetrating armour. Um, you get this weird little thing, bigger, bigger shells get harder to penetrate sometimes. So the tactics of this vehicle is 
it's best to use as your secondary tank. Um, it's best to use as the tank you, you take out after you've died in the AMC. However, if you find yourself on a urban map, so a map with cities and things like that, then this tank is good to take out first, because you can use it to tank damage. Basically, you can drive in front of the field and soak up damage from the enemy vehicles. So, we've got a Panzer IV here, and again, we're going to shoot it, and again, we penetrate it easily. But as you can see, the, the com commander behind the driver only took a little bit of damage, because our shell lost velocity as soon as it penetrated. But the good thing about this shell is you can pretty much penetrate a tank any way you look at it. You're not going to have any trouble at low tiers penetrating tanks with this thing. You may have a little bit of trouble penetrating the mantlet, for instance. Um, you're still going to go through, but you're not going to cause much damage. Now this tank, when it's angled, is almost impossible to be penetrated. Only the Russian and Russians and British will be able to cause issues to you. Um, your armour of 40 millimetres, the whole armour that is, and your turret armour is quite strong. And when you actually angle it 25 degrees, so let's angle it now at 25 degrees, sort of this angle here, it becomes very hard to penetrate by this tank. So if it was shooting at us in the hull, it would find it very hard to go through our hull armour. The shells would just ping off. However, the turret is a bit of your weak spot. You may still f have issues and can be penned by most nations due to the weak point on the t gun breach of the turret and also that dome on the top there where the commander has his head. So angled at this position, the Panzer IV might not be able to penetrate us but we're definitely able to penetrate him and we can really do a lot of damage to him. The other thing about these tanks is they've got a relatively quick reload time. But as you can see here, this tank has taken three shots from us. If we miss and aim for things that aren't actually important, we're going to struggle to cause damage to this tank. And it can take a few shots to kill just because the shell is so small. So you need to take out the crew members. If you're facing uh, most tanks, it's best to shoot on the right side of the turret because that's where the gunner sits. Alright, let's head back to the hangar now. So if we look at the armour here, as you can see, 40mm of armour all the way around, other than this little section here which is 22mm, but it's angled extremely well, and not many things are going to be able to penetrate this armour. Now as I said, if you angle this tank at around 25 degrees, most things are going to struggle to penetrate you. So let's just jump to the Germans, and we'll go to the Panzer 3B, and the Panzer Granat shell at 500 meters. So as you can see, in this position, if we had it like this, the front of this tank is nearly impossible to penetrate. There are a couple of little spots where you might get penetrated, but there's very little chance they're going to go through your hull. However, your turret can be a weak point. As I said, the dome on top can be an issue. Um, if, it's, if you're sort of slightly below a tank, then they're going to usually better penetrate this sort of dome area at the lowest point. Um, also, the front on with the turret, the breach here is quite weak, so there is a chance that you will get penetrated through that section. However, as I said, most tanks are going to struggle to go through you with their basic rounds. However, once they get some more penetrating rounds, like the Panzer Grenade 40, which is an uh, armour piercing composite rigid shell, if we angle ourselves at 20 degrees again, the hull is still quite protected at this section. However, the front now is a little bit weaker, and our driver's port is easy to go through. So, you have to be very careful with angling this tank. And always angle it this side on. Don't angle it this way, because then you have this big weak spot here. Frontally, again, you've got quite a few weak spots. However, you will deflect shells still. You've still got a chance to, to not get killed. The turret is still quite strong, um, simply because of the way it's angled. Uh, because of the slight sloping, it means there's a chance the shell will ricochet. But as I said, the dome bend becomes quite an easy weak spot. So if we shot this tank 
say we were slightly above the tank below us, we'd have quite a strong tank to sh shoot against. But there is that chance they're going to penetrate us. So you have to be very careful with this tank, basically. Now the French lineup through ranks 1 and 2 can be a bit of a struggle. Let's just look at the tech tree here. The trouble with the early French tanks is they're a lot of pre-war machines. So you've got things like the Somo, the Somo um, S35, which is very similar to the H39, um, but it is a little bit different. It's made by Somo for once. Um, but as you can see, it's got a cast hull, it has the same turret. Um, the armour is a little bit sort of stronger just because of the curves of it in some places, but overall it's not as it's sort of a little bit weaker in some respects. It's also quite a slow machine as well, um, compared to other nations' vehicles. There's also the Shah B1. Now the Shah B1 is a super heavy tank. Now super heavy tanks were developed early on in the war, and basically they are giant tanks made of massive amounts of armour. So the armour on this tank, as you can see, 60mm, 55mm. The turret, again, that same old turret, um, it's, it, as I said, the, the turret was used a lot by the French, uh, but this thing has a lot of armour on it. Uh, but it's very slow, very lumbering, and it only has a 47mm, sorry, 47mm gun in the turret. The main gun is in the hull, so it's almost like a casemate tank destroyer mixed with a tank. It can be very good, um, sometimes you will face it and people won't be able to penetrate it, however there are weak points. The South 40, the tank destroyer, is very weak, but it has got a very good gun. The 75mm gun is very, very good, it has a good amount of penetration for it and a very good velocity. So it can be a good little tank destroyer, but it does struggle a little bit. The AMC 35 is the upgrade of the 34, and it's a much better vehicle overall. Um, this vehicle is a much better tank, it's much faster. Um, the armour is still relatively thin, but it is a lot quicker. And one of the other things for this vehicle is you do get the scouting mechanic, so you can scout with it. It also gets the newer 47mm gun, which has the armour piercing shell on it with up to 61mm of penetration. Now when you're grinding the French, what I would recommend is going down this line, this line and this line. These are your main lines to go down. Also the AA is handy, of course. The AAA, the Tier 1, uh, Citroen is a, a bit of a funny vehicle. Uh, it's basically a truck with four Lewis, uh, no, they're, not, they're Hotchkiss machine guns, sorry. Um, four Hotchkiss machine guns strapped to it. And these big machine guns are 13.2 millimeters, so they've got a bit of punch behind them. It's actually a very good anti aircraft vehicle just because of the sheer amount of firepower it has, but the shells aren't that. That don't have a huge amount of penetration. Um, they can penetrate some of the lower tier vehicles, uh, but it's a very weak vehicle because it can be taken out with any machine gun. Then you get the CCKW AA. Basically, this is a big truck with a big gun on it. It has a 40mm Bofors cannon, and this is an auto cannon. Again, it has very good armor piercing value. Um, this thing can actually be used as a tank destroyer. Uh, but it is okay as an anti-aircraft gun. But again, you have a very exposed crew, so you can be taken out extremely easily. What you want to aim for is the AMX-13 DCA-40, and this is one of the best AAA vehicles in the game, in my opinion. This thing is fantastic. The 40mm MLE-51 gun is very similar to the Bofors. It's actually a sort of French copy. Um, it's a very good anti-aircraft vehicle. Now, the crew do have a little bit of exposure through the top, uh, the armor's not great, but it will save you from small arms fire. But this thing is very fast, with a very powerful gun, and the gun does have quite a bit of penetration behind it. As you can see, up to 93mm of point-blank range, you can actually kill things like Panthers with this type, this uh, anti-aircraft vehicle. But, as an anti-aircraft vehicle, it's fantastic too. Now, what you want to aim for are the ARL-44, the M4A, 32, the Jumbo, basically, the M4A5, the SA50, and the AMX13. Now, the AMX13 is one of the best scout vehicles in the game. This tank is fantastic. Again, modification work, it has a very good gun. Um, 
it has up to you know 100 millimeters penetration with its main shot. It also has an armor-piercing cap ballistic cap shell, so it has some explosive filler in. And again, this shell has got a lot of penetration to it. This tank is very fast. It's a scout vehicle, and it is a very good little tank. It's fantastic for maps where you've got quite a lot of hills because you can hide very well. You can scout out the enemy, plus you can take them out rather easily. One of the downsides for the French tanks, though, is this turret, which, which is an oscillating turret. Now, what that means is the whole turret moves. So if we look at the armor view, you can see here that the turret has armor going down here. Now, what happens with this turret is the whole turret moves. So it goes up and down. It doesn't have any elevation on the... Now, what we'll do is we'll take out the FL-10 Torelli. And this was actually built for the Israeli Defense Force um, by France, and it was a sort of converted Sherman, and used well into the uh, 70s, I think, and 80s. So we'll just take it for a quick test drive. So here we are on the range, and of course this is a tank you can purchase yourself with uh, real money. Uh, I think it's around about $40 US, uh, but it has this oscillating turret. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it up, and as you can see the whole turret moves. The gun doesn't move, but the turret does. So it's a very strange feature. Um, and it was developed because it basically gives the crew a little bit more room inside. Uh, because you don't have to have the turret rotation system and the elevation system in there. You just need the gun. So the turret has more room, which means you can make a smaller turret. The trouble with this, though, is it's not stabilised. So when you're moving, the gun can be very wobbly. So as you see here, the whole gun moves up and down. Now, the standard Shermans have a stabiliser which just helps that from moving up and down as much. The benefit of this tank though is its gun. And the gun is very powerful. You will just be able to penetrate pretty much anything in game with this thing. And it's the same gun that's used for the, um, for the standard version in the tech tree. So, it's a very, very high-powered gun, very high velocity, very easy to use gun. Now, one of the other things you can have with an oscillating turret is what's called an autoloader, which basically means that the gun has its bullets. Imagine a uh, revolver, a six-shot revolver. And basically, this is what the gun shells are like. So this means you have an insane rate of fire. You fire much quickly because you don't need a loader. So we'll just head back to the, uh, back to the garage now. So as you see, the French tanks can be very, very effective. Um, and this is where you start getting things like autoloaders. Now the autoloaders really come into effect at rank 4 onwards. The AMX-13, if we look in the X-ray, does not have an autoloader. So this is a non-autoloading variant. So you still have to basically load the, the, the gun manually, which does take a bit more time. However, the next tank down, the AMX-13, if we look at it, does get auto-loading. And this really helps the tank become much, much quicker firing. So if we look at some of the next tanks down, we'll go to the Shah 25T, for instance, uh, and look at this tank. Now this is again an auto-loader with a 90mm cannon. And if you look in the bottom of the tank, you can actually see the drum where the shells are. And these are basically like a like a six shooter. You shoot it, it turns around, next shell goes up, and it makes for a very quick rate of fire. And this is where France comes into its own. Things like the Lorraine, the AMX-50, the AMX-M4, um, the AMX-50 Service A. You know, these are all auto-loading machines, and they fire at a very fast rate with a very powerful gun. In rank 3 we have things like the ARLs and the Jumbo. Now the Jumbo is, in my mind, one of the most overpowered tanks in game. It's actually been moved up a little bit to 5.0 now, but it's still a very powerful tank. Now, the sort of loadout and um, team you want to basically build up for the French is the team of the SA-50, the AMX-13, the Jumbo, the AMX-13 DCA-40, and you can take out the ARL as well, uh, because it can sometimes be useful, depending on how many slots you have. But these tanks are absolutely 
fantastic for grinding with. You'll be able to grind all of this line with this setup and not have an issue. They're a very good lineup. It's one of the strongest lineups in game. And that's where France comes into its own. As we go down towards the modern technology, France doesn't have its newest main battle tank yet. The AMX-40 is its most modern vehicle, and the AMX-40 was made as a um, basically a vehicle that France would sell. But it has a very good gun on it, the 20mm Gayat CN120, um, which gives it a very good shell. It also has some spaced armour and composite armour that allows it to have a little bit more strength. But this is something you won't get for a very, very long time, but it is something you can work towards. The gun is very good, um, especially with the APF-DS in it, which has, as you can see, 486mm of penetration, 480mm of penetration at 500m. It's a very, very strong shell. Now, they also have the AMX-30, of course, and the AMX-30 is the sort of first tank you'll be getting as a sort of modern tank, and of course you can buy it as a premium. The AMX-30 is a little bit different in the way it uses its shell. It actually only has a uh, sort of heat shell, so a high explosive anti-tank shell. It also has a um, high explosive shell, but the heat shell is the most useful one. As you can see, it has 400 millimeters of penetration at all ranges because it is a chemical shell. The only downside with these tanks is they don't have an, a stabilizer, so they do suffer a bit, but they are a very, very strong tank. So if you're looking to go for the French lineup, um, I hope this video has helped. As I said, when you're starting to grind, aim for these trees because this will help you. Um, it, the tanks struggle up to rank 3, but once you hit rank 3 it becomes fantastic and you really feel it pay off. It's such a good feeling when you start getting these good tanks. The ARL44, for instance, is a very good tank still. It's basically a um, almost like a tiger at battle rating 4.0 because it has very strong front armor up to 80 millimeters of pen 80 millimeters of protection the lower plate 180 the turret itself is very strong with over 100 millimeters of armor on it so it is a very very strong tank from the front and this thing can be an absolute monster the only area it suffers from is just its gun isn't quite as good as some of the others but it still packs enough punch for its battle rating um, with almost 95 millimeters of penetration at 500 meters, it has got a lot of bang for the for its uh, for its tier. The second bearing, which is listed as a tank destroyer, has the 90 millimeter cannon in, and this thing again is very strong. The cannon, as you can see, has over 200 millimeters of penetration. The tank, though, does struggle a little bit because the armor at this stage does start to feel a little bit weak, even though you have 160 millimeters of penetration. Uh, sorry, of armor, and the turret again has 100 millimeters of armor. You're going to be fighting vehicles that have shells that will penetrate 200 millimeters of armor, so you can struggle a little bit with this tank, but it can still be fun in the right circumstances. Okay, well, I hope you found this uh, tutorial, this uh, beginner's guide, a little bit interesting, and I hope it helps you for your French adventure. Uh, leave a comment, leave us a, a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment as well. Um, come join the Discord server, the Kaiju Club, in the link below, uh, if you have any questions, and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And I hope you have a fantastic day, and enjoy the French tech tree. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>